I was really on a 50-50, do I send it back, do I not send it back kind of thing. And then, the whole gimbal thing came up. And now, some people are saying, well, if it's not affecting the performance of the gimbal, don't send it back. These, these little stress lines, these little gimbal stress cracks. If it doesn't affect the performance, then don't send it back, right? Why send it back? Well, because this is a lot of money to pay for. Would you accept a crack in your screen on your iPhone if you had to pay full price for your iPhone at $800? I mean, or, or think about that though. This is more than, than that 128 gig iPhone for $850. And you're gonna sit here and go, well, as long as it still works, it's okay. No, I'm not okay with this. I'm really not okay with this. Um, I got minimal flight time on it. I only got maybe, maybe seven packs through it, seven batteries, total flight time. And the first three was taking it really, really light and easy, not even going over 150 feet, because being my first expensive drone, I'm taking my time and doing things right. So let's uh, switch it over to the microscope channel here. So let's take a closer look. See what we have here. Visibly by my eye alone, which is 2010 vision on a good day when my health isn't screwing with my eyes. Um, I didn't see anything. But taking a slightly closer look under the microscope we definitely have a notable stress crack here. Yep. So there is stress crack number one and it doesn't just go across here. It seems to ride See if I can get the focus out on this. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. That is just not a stress crack from the screw being the wrong size here, guys. Hold on. Let me adjust my microscope up a little higher. I'm at my max height already. I'm gonna have to tilt this high, so. Tilt this a little higher and bring this in at this angle. Yes, this this is this is not just a little stress crack across the top. This is splitting all the way down in here. So I see this whole entire corner breaking off here eventually which would compromise the integrity of the unit. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some more things. There's some things I want to point out for a different video, so I'll actually take the footage from this video and see if we can do that as well. I want to point out some of the other issues that makes the gimbal such a sensitive creature on the, uh, on the Mavic. One is these very cables. Very, very fragile stuff here. That's a little bit of adhesive glue that's supposed to be keeping this in place and you can see that glue is already separating. It is not holding. It should be stuck back there like that. And well, you saw it. The glue was already coming off. So that <laughs> I'm slightly out of focus on you guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my best here. But yeah, there's just some things that are a little hard to to get in focus at different angles here. So there was a little glue on this ribbon cable back here that was supposed to keep this ribbon cable up against the side and it had worked its way free. I just slightly put it back just with a little bit of a push. Uh, so whatever adhesive, whatever glue that they're planning on using there to keep this ribbon cable in place doesn't seem to be strong enough either. Weak spot number two, the ribbon cable up front 
mostly not an issue unless you crash it might get pinched back in there and if it does get bent and pinched it's probably because this glue broke free this uh, double sided adhesive here but keep in mind um, with this particular ribbon cable here if you use the third party 3D printed gimbal lock you are now you have to be very careful about this one the stock gimbal lock let me pull mine out you have to be particularly careful about this one back here with the stock gimbal lock and we can see a metal tab that's interesting what do we got a metal tab there for it just looks like a, a part of an exposed cable on the ribbon we're actually going to probably unlock it because now I want to inspect the rest of this gimbal for fractures in other locations as well because this whole entire gimbal is made out of the same material let's see what else we can find huh? yeah so from the front top there's this one screw here the bracket this is where these wires come through on this uh, side channel here uh, this is actually an, an addition to the round motor casing bracket here so this looks like a crack but it's actually a separate piece so don't be concerned about this one this is normal same thing with this uh, side plate here this whole entire side plate that covers up the wires and the one part of the motor to this channel to that motor for these wires uh, this whole side plate is separate so you'll see a line down this side here and you'll see a line down this side these are just again a separate piece I can't do any further inspection with the uh, gimbal lock on so now it's time to take the gimbal lock off and be very careful I want to make sure I don't overextend past its capabilities or limits and it's, it's going to require me to go a little slower while I check this carefully Some kind of scratches. That's nothing that the Mavic would. Have, ooh, wait, what do we got here? Is this all stress stress cracks? What about that? Interesting. Hold on. I don't want to get anything on my lens, so I'm gonna glove up while I hold this uh, this guy. Put some nitro gloves on here. Uh, these are some pretty, pretty good digs in here, but I'm more concerned about this particular area right here. Let's see if I can get that in focus so I can show you what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at right here on the back of this shield. I'm going to have to try to angle it a different way. I'm not quite sure what to think of this. They're not quite... Or are they cracks? Oh, I do feel little ridges in there. I'm going to have to... I said I wasn't going to prod with metal, but just to... There are little ridges in here. So there's one, two, three, four little stress cracks here. And on the opposite side of that, the exact opposite side actually. Taking a look at this, and I have to be very careful not to shake the desk at all. This is cracking all the way from here all the way down to here. So there's a whole ride here of cracks starting. Some of them are starting to go around a little bit here too. Guys, the, the, the truth is this material, I don't know what they made this out of. This, this is not good. This is not holding up under normal 
flying conditions. And that that's well, that's just the plain truth. That is a lot of cracks on this back plate there. Luckily this back plate I don't believe is that critical except for protecting wires to the uh, rear motor of the gimbal, the rear camera motor of the gimbal. These are all the wires. If I if I adjust my focus, you'll see that these are all the rear wires in here. Um, thank you, sweetie. So yeah, it looks like we do have a uh, we have we have, we have defect. I would call this defective gimbals made out of a bad material. It just so happens the cracks are much larger where the screws go in in certain areas, and on some some people can see them more visibly with their bare eye or magnifying glass. If I take a closer inspection of this, there's about 15, maybe 10, 12 little stress cracks starting on this side back plate here. On the opposite side, I count it three for sure. Now that I actually have something to set the drone on, I might be able to get a better look at the back side of this without shaking so much. Okay, so I want to, oh, I wish I could use the mouse. I want to try to use the mouse. So right here, we have one, two, three starting here. Three on this side isn't that bad, but on the opposite side of this, there is a lot more than three going on. So I have a crack back here on that screw right there. Oh, I should be using my mouse really. So right here, I have a crack back in here too. In fact, you know what, let's take a snapshot of that. And so you can tell where that is, that's on the back plate. And then we have the crack stress lines here, and we have the crack stress lines here, we have the crack here, so there's, and these tool marks or scratches, debatable, not quite sure. I'm really not sure about that. Let's turn the gimbal this way now. Let's go on to this side. We might have another small one right there. Holding it steady is going to be a pain because the gimbal wants to bounce around. Very, very, very small one right there. Let's see if I can focus it. Just starting. It hasn't quite cracked yet, but you can see the stressing starting in the material. Or from this angle, I might take that back. It may have cracked. I can't even whisper on my desk without this gimbal jumping around on me. That's a very, very small one starting though. Not as bad as I've seen on other ones. There's no doubt that that's a crack there. And the concerning part is, as I mentioned, it's not just cracking there, it's actually going there and down and around inside the track here. <sighs> concerns, concerns, concerns. Is that a crack or is it just a speck of dust? It's a crack and that's not even by the screw at all. Seriously. There's a crack in there and it's not even by the screw. Let me grab the mouse. Right here. Look at that. I'm almost 
certain, 100% that is correct. I'm going to take my finest tweezers. Yeah, there's a little ridge there. Okay. I really want to know what this metal is. I want to know what kind of compound, what kind of composition this is, what its hardness rating is, if it was even tested. So we can see how the cable moves and flexes here. Looks like it must be a tape that holds it right about there. Yep. As I suspected, a little bit of tape. That's glued down properly. Nowhere near this. But what is this? Was that supposed to be glued somewhere? I doubt it. And this was for shipping only. And then the rear cable, its job. is for this rocking motion, of course. And these are the two screws that I'm going to have the hardest time checking. Just because of the angle and having to hold it very carefully. This is usually where the scratches are, too, from that one bracket underneath. Um, I think we're okay there. Of course, I really don't have the right angle to check this. At this point, adding any kind of ND filter to it, I think, would be cause for uh, adding extra weight. And I don't, I don't trust this metal. I think you may actually cause more stress cracks by adding any kind of filter to this at all. Um, it doesn't need to be that much of a filter at all. To tell you the truth, I, I just, yeah, I would be seriously concerned about any kind of filter for that fact. DJI suggests that you actually put the gimbal upside down because it is the easiest way to insert your gimbal lock. In fact, let me show you how a gimbal lock is supposed to be inserted, inserted real close. We do have these on the gimbal lock itself. We have these little slits here. These little slits actually go in the back of the camera. These little slits here. These match up. Uh, then we have an additional notch right here which covers this. So if we simply, in fact there's even a little track here. Let me see if I can get that track in focus. There's a track on each side here. It starts off wide, narrows down where the gimbal lock is supposed to ride to help you line it up and put it into place. Now, when you're inserting this gimbal lock, you want to make sure when you put this down here that one, you don't want to be too forward. You don't want to push on this cable, you don't want to pinch this cable. That would be a really bad thing. That will cause damage to the cable. And then two, they suggest you put it upside down. So when putting the gimbal lock together, you want to get in that little track while keeping everything lined up and pushing down into place. And of course they suggest when doing this, slightly holding the front here, like so, just ever so gently. You're just holding it in place just a little bit. 